Hello there, and we are back again with another episode of the On The Day Show. Now, does singing improve mental health? We sent our Nina out and about to find out more. I'm in Wolle. I've come from the studio to meet with a local music group. We've got Paulette and we've got Jackie. People ask me, what do I think about modern comics? Modern comics are good, but I do not... I have been on the stage since I was 16 and I'm 85 years of age and I still work. <laughs> Now, what we've all been waiting for, we are now off to the countryside to see what Peter and Artie have been up to this week. And we've had a bit, we've had a bit fun hunting in our time, Artie. Aye, uh, we have. It's I've come from the studio to North Shields to meet with the lovely Val and Jan who have brought along some amazing photographs today from the 1960s and 70s. Look at those. I cannot wait to hear all their stories when we take a trip down memory lane. How did you two actually meet again? How, were you really, really tiny at school? Or was no, no, we weren't no. at school together. Right. No, because I lived in North Shields, Val lived in Gateshead. We met through mutual friends. friends. Um, and they introduced us in Newcastle, one night actually. in a bar in, in Newcastle and we just got on straight away and yeah. we arranged to meet the next oh. week and that was it. Do you remember this family? Well, Benidorm, so 1970. Was this your first holiday you'd ever went abroad? Yes, yes, yes so, it was. Oh, a new experience. Yeah. What year was that? It was 1970, wasn't 1970, it? 1970, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Colours Pegasus. Yes. Never heard, of, never heard of Benidorm? No, we didn't. No, at all. We no, just no. wanted to go to we Spain. We just wanted to go to Spain and went to this very small hotel. <laughs> um, what about the cost though? Um, £52 yeah, no. for a fortnight. Half board. Yeah. Used to come from the top lads came from uh, from the Cumbrian side. They were fell runners up That's there. That's right. And yeah, they two. were. Sedgwick they... was one. He was second to me the year I won it, and then he, w I think he was second to Minto with the year I was third. Lonnie Donegan, who uh, probably a lot of people didn't write because of the style of singing that he mm -hmm. that he did. He was a uh, he was my best friend ever. Now, we are back in the studio and we are joined by Dr. Judith Bellamy. Hello, Judith. Hello. Hello. So I was the only hippie in Wall's End. <laughs> <laughs> Fashionable hippie. And throughout my life, I've always sewn. So if anything needed sewn, curtains or anything, I did it. If anything needed knitting, my mum did it. And if anything needed crocheting, my grandma did it. So we were covered. Right. I had everything. Yeah. Tommy took all the cuts down away and built whatever he was building. Yeah, but that, yeah, but, uh, that was Ward built. He, he took the hall, the Biddleston Hall down. Oh, right. Which was lovely white sandstone. That's right. I remember uh, my father. Uh, so I used to have horses when I was younger. But do you have a passion for horses? When I was 16, I went to Sussex and worked on a farm looking after horses. So I've always been crazy about horses. And then I've had one or two jobs in horse racing. I've run a racing club 
for the five race courses in the north a few years ago. I ran a business um, leasing race horses for the day. My, my parents were into horse racing. I was taken to the Northumberland Plate on my first birthday and parked next to the paddock in my pushchair. And I've spent most of my life standing at the parade ring looking at horses anyway, and I've developed a really good eye for them. And I'm, I'm, I feel as if I've got a very natural connection with them and can you know, really spot the, the good ones from the bad ones. Do you remember? They ran the show. They, just, they, just, they were just managers, really. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Glanton right. was only 130 acres. That we, uh, when I was still at school, there was a tractorman. There's a cowman, because we dad converted into a dairy at that time. And there was Jimmy Dodge, who was my cousin. He was a spare man on that, even uh, on that age, yeah, you know? Yeah. Speaking of men with long hair and beards, you, you were telling me you do with the Mayfair back in the day, what yeah. bands did you oh. see there? Oh, oh all, wow. all of the big names. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin The Who, <sighs> uh, Deep Purple, Free. <laughs> Lo yeah, lot, lot, all, loads, loads, all of them, um, yeah. That, huh? yeah. A lot of the groups that I saw, not the really, really big names, but like Lindisfarne, mm -hmm. who used to be called Brethren, mm -hmm. they started off in places like Whitley Bay. Mm -hmm. There used to be a YMCA, or there used to be the Rex, mm -hmm. and we used to go and see all these groups who started it's off local. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've got. To see, there were no selfies in those days. We didn't, and, and you, you didn't know, have phones, it and it was amazing yeah. that you know how we managed to keep in touch. I oh, know. Yeah. You would just say one weekend, I'll see you next weekend, Hopefully because we didn't have any phones. Absolutely, uh -huh. landline. Yeah. Yeah. If some people didn't have a landline, I know my mum was saying she didn't, didn't at the time. Line. She would make an arrangement like you were saying, oh, yeah. and you would just that hope was... that somebody was there. Yes. Yeah. Said, yeah. yeah. I I discovered Tom Jones, and on the bill with me was a girl a Welsh girl who had a record contract actually called Maya Lewis mm. and a band called Tommy Scott and the Senators. That's one thing about places like this. What's that? They never change. Generations come and they go. Get to the point. Cameron, we need to know what he knows. He's a player. Look if he can tie his bootlace as that one. But he's more than that, isn't he, Mr Douglas? You're going to perform for us today, aren't you? What we are. three songs? Are well, you? we're going to use three that we sing in church. Um. This takes me back. I said, well, it was a coat. Well, actually, the coat was the lining. So I took the lining out of an old coat. It was my husband's blessing. <laughs> Come on, Jacqueline. What's the age range? Come on. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll get you on here before long. It's fine. Right. Ready? Yep. Camera's rolling. Now, have you ever been involved in dressmaking, embroidery, even fabrics? We went along to a very special exhibition in Berwick to find out more. The exhibition is about storytelling. It's called Textile Stories. And that's the, that's the carrier, the carrier of the 
of the stories is through the textiles. So each of the artists tells stories through textiles in one form or another. studio along to Annick where I'm at the Alegate for an open mic afternoon. Great way to spend a Sunday afternoon and I've got the founder Ian with me today of this event. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, a few other guys locally have tried to get it off the ground but I just said look people need somewhere to play and you know uh, get it kind of it's, 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 it's different playing at home you know but you're not playing to anybody you're just playing the songs they're not going anywhere, whereas you've got like a, 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 a you know a captive audience, shall we say, that's, that, that is good. Because people can come out of the house on a Sunday, what we're doing, not doing very much, but come out, go out for a drink and watch, watch the guys perform, which is, and, and the great thing about it is that it's totally, totally free. Running pubs, it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. It's 24-7. Oh, it mm. You've got to love it, and we do. We do love it, it's fabulous. We love the people, we love, we love the beer, we love the gin, we love everything about it. It's, you and know. you get to hear many stories as well from different oh, people. Yes, sometimes over and over again. Over and over again. <laughs>